Hey there guys, it's Amit, you're watching DevDreamer and welcome to lesson 43 in our JavaScript series. In this lesson, we're going to learn all about the destructuring assignment. As always, if you enjoy the content, don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Also, be sure to ring that bell and choose all notifications so you never miss an update. Okay, so welcome back to lesson 43. So over the next few lessons, we're going to be learning about some of the features that have been made available to us with the ES6 update. And these features specifically help us to work with things such as arrays, objects, and functions. So in this lesson then, of course, we're going to be learning about the destructuring assignment. The destructuring assignment is a syntax that allows us to very quickly and conveniently assign object properties or array items, depending on which one we're using, as variables. Let's start with objects. So in our text editor here, I'm going to say const game, let's create our game object, and we'll say title. Let's go for something different this time. Let's say, Donkey Kong Country. We'll create another property called platform. Okay, and assign this to snares. And then finally, we'll do a third property called year and set this to 1994. Okay, so now if we wanted to, let's say, log the title to the console, we simply say console.log and then we'll say game, which is the name of our object, dot title. So if we save, we get Donkey Kong Country in the console. No surprises there. Let's just capitalize this. Now, previously, if we wanted to create new variables for each of these properties, we would have to do something like this. So just above this console log here, I'm going to say, let title be assigned the value of game.title and just duplicate these. And we'll say, let platform be assigned the value of game.platform. And then finally, we'll say, let year be assigned the value of game dot yeah. Okay, so now what we can do, now that we've actually put all of these into their own variables, we can just say console.log, get rid of this, and simply title, let's save, and we still get our title. So this works fine, but doing this is a bit of a handful. So this is where destructuring comes to the rescue. So with destructuring then, let's just uh, comment this out. So this is going to be object destructuring. So with object destructuring, we can do all this on a single line. So we simply say let to create our variable or variables as you'll come to see. Then we do space and then we do curly braces. And now we're going to create a comma separated list of our variable names. So like we had here, title, platform, and year, these need to refer to our property names. Okay. So we need to say title, we've got platform and we've got year. And then finally, we need to assign this whole thing to the name of our object. So this is going to be game, okay? And now let's just log each of these out. Let's copy this, okay? So now if we save, check this out guys, we get all of our values right there. So we've got our title, the platform, and the year. So as you can see, doing this was a lot easier than doing this. So once again, to use object destructuring, we simply use our variable keyword, I'm using let here, then we use curly braces, then the name of each of our properties, and then we simply assign this to the name of our object. And so now we've got access to each of these as variables. Another thing to bear in mind is that destructuring an object, which is what we've done here, does not mutate or change the original object. So this game object is still there and it's still available to use. Also, by default, destructuring will create the new variables using the same names as the object properties. However, we do also have the option of choosing our own custom names. For example, let's say we wanted our year variable to instead be called um, release. In our destructuring, we'd simply use a colon and then choose the new variable name. So here I'm going to say release. So now if we console log release and save, if we try to log year, then the console returns an error saying year is not defined. We can also destructure nested object values. So up here, if we had a nested object, let's call this characters. So here we have an object within an object. And in here, let's say main Donkey Kong. We'll say side Diddy Kong. And finally, let's say boss. King K rule. Okay, so now that we have our game object and then inside that we have this characters object. So down here in our destructuring, 
let's just put all these on new lines actually so it's easy to read we can now say characters colon curly braces because this is an object and then once again we simply specify the names of our variables so we want a main variable side and a boss variable so now down here we can say console.arg main side and boss and if we save we get all those values there so that all works fine now if we wanted to refer to the characters object itself so if we said console.log characters in the console you'll see that this won't work so let's save and we get an error saying characters is not defined so here what we need to do is we need to actually destructure the nested object itself so above this i'm going to say characters like so and now if we save that works fine we now can reference this characters variable because it exists right here on this line all we were doing was simply creating variables for these properties inside of our characters object however this actually refers to the characters object itself finally for object destructuring we can also use it to access the properties of primitives so for example strings have the length property available on them so we could say something like let curly braces we'll call this variable length and assign this to a string let's just say dev dreamer and now if we console log our length variable like so save we get the number 11 because that's the length of this string so this is another useful way that we can use destructuring now we can't do this for methods remember only properties and a string is a global object for strings we can simply use the destructuring assignment and pull out this property okay so that's all about object destructuring let's now move on to array destructuring so let's get rid of all this and so for array destructuring once again what we're looking to do is create new variables by using our array item as a value so let's first of all create our array so we'll say const book and we'll assign this to an array with the following values the last battle c.s lewis and for the year we'll say 1956 which is when this was released so arrays will always keep their order so this is 0 1 and 2 so to store these values as variables we could do something like this okay so we're saying let title be assigned the value of book and then we're targeting square brackets 0 which is this here then we've got author is book 1 and year is book 2 so now of course if we go ahead and log these to the console we get all our values right there However, just like object destructuring, we can do all this on a single line. So let's comment this out. And let's see how to use array destructuring now. So array destructuring. So this is very similar to object destructuring. So we're going to say let, and then instead of curly braces, we need to use square brackets. So we're gonna say square brackets. And then inside this, once again, we need a comma separated list of all of our variables. So we'll say title, author and finally yeah and then we assign the whole thing to our array so here our array is called book and now if we go ahead and save we can see we get the same values but this time we've destructured our array to pull out all of these variables so once again a quicker and cleaner way of pulling out these variable names so what happens then if we only want to store certain values from our array into variables and not all of them so for example let's say we didn't want to pull out this author variable all we wanted was the title and the year well we can simply skip the ones we don't want to store by leaving a blank space like so and now if we save we'll of course get an error there because author is not defined but the other two work just fine also just like we could with objects we can also destructure nested values inside of arrays so in here let's just add a nested array Okay, so we've got our normal array values, and then we've got this nested array inside here with shift, puzzle, and Tyrion, and these are just characters from this book. And now down here in our destructuring, let's just add our author variable back in. We can now reference this nested array by simply saying square brackets, and so we're adding this at the position of our nested array. So we've got title, author, year, and then we've got our nested array, which is why we've got these square brackets here. And then we simply add our variable names that will correspond to our nested values. So let's just say A, B, and C. 
And now let's console log them. And save. And we get our three nested array values right there. So that's how to use array destructuring. Okay guys, so that's all about the destructuring assignment. We've looked at object destructuring and array destructuring, and we've seen how we can actually pull out that information in a much cleaner and efficient way. So rather than doing all this, we can do all of that on a single line. So as mentioned, super important for you to know about, especially when we come on to things such as React and Vue, as they use quite frequently in there. And as you can see, destructuring makes our job as JavaScript developers so much easier and so much faster. Let's go ahead and summarize this lesson. So destructuring is a syntax that allows us to very quickly and very easily pull out object properties or array items as variables. As we saw, those are the two types of destructuring, object destructuring and array destructuring. With objects, we simply create a comma separated list of the properties inside curly braces, and then we assign the whole thing to the name of the object. And then with arrays, we do exactly the same thing, but this time we use square brackets. And finally, we can also do things such as destructure nested values from both objects and arrays. We can skip values altogether, as well as rename variables on the fly as we're destructuring. So let's take a look at your tasks for this lesson. So three tasks for this lesson. For task number one, I want you to create an object called user with the following properties, first name and country, and then add a nested object called to do's, and then add a few to do's with numbered property names. For example, one, do the shopping, two, play some games. And then I want you to use the destructuring assignment to destructure all these object properties, including the nested ones, and then simply log them all to the console. For task two, I want you to create an array with a list of any values, for example, a list of books or films, and then use the destructuring assignment to destructure these values and log them to the console. And finally, I want you to create a nested array with any three values, add this to your array in task two, and then add all these new values to the destructuring while skipping the second value in your nested array. So guys, pause the video, try these out, and when we come back, we'll take a look at the answers. Okay, so how'd you go on then? Let's see. So for task one, we need to create an object called user. So down here, we'll say const user, and assign this to an object literal. And we need the following properties, first name and country. Okay, so we've got first name and country. And then we need to create a nested object called to do's. So down here, let's say to do's. Let's give ourselves some space here. And let's go for, let's say, visit Hagrid. Say practice for Quidditch match, and then we'll do one more complete portions homework. Okay, so we've got our object. Now, what do we need to do? We need to use the destructuring assignment to destructure all these object properties, including the nested to dos as well. So, down here, we want to say let go to braces. We know that we're going to assign this whole thing eventually to our user object, so let's just put that in now. I'll separate these onto new lines. So we want first name, country, and then finally we want our to-dos. And then we're going to destructure each of these to-do properties as well. So we're going to say to-do one, to-do two, and finally to-do three. Okay, and then down here, let's just console log all of our values. So we've got first name, country, and we've got to-do one, to-do two, and to-do three. Let's go ahead and save. Perfect, so we get all of those values successfully logged to the console. So that's task one. Now for task two, we need to create an array with a list of any values, for example, books or films, and use the destructuring assignment to log those to the console. So down here, let's just uh, get rid of this now. So we're gonna say const books, and then let's drop in these array values. And then we need to log these to the console using array destructuring. So we're gonna say let and we'll call these book one, book two, and book three. Then we'll assign the whole thing to our books array. And then down here, we'll console log book one, book two, and book three. Let's save. And of course, we'll get those values successfully logged to the console. Finally then for task three, we need to add a nested array with any three values and then add this to our destructuring. So over here, we're going to add this nested array in with four more books. And then to destructure these, we simply need to add those inside of their own array, square brackets. And we'll say book four, book five, book six, and book seven. And here what we need to do is we need to skip the second nested value. So it's going to be this book five here. So to do that, we simply remove it. 
and let's log those three to the console. Now if we save, we get all of those values logged to the console, of course, missing out the one that we skipped, which was this one right here. So guys, well done on completing those tasks. That's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, we're going to learn all about the spread operator, which is going to be really, really cool. So be sure to tune in. Don't forget to comment, share, like, and subscribe down below. And of course, hit the bell and choose all notifications. And I'll see you on the next one.